Yo, it's your boy Logos. And to that one, we had to Joe Rogan and his guests discuss the Israel Hamas conflict. Is it because of the fact that it seems that Joe Rogan seems to have the thoughts and feelings of the average day American in mind much more than the media does? And I think that's part of the reason for his success and why so many people watch him, even if they don't always like or disagree with him or agree with him, to be honest. Clearly, we've seen over the past few years, the media is bought out. They used to be provider of unbiased, somewhat truthful information, or if there are biased, they can at least tell you that, but clearly that's not the case. Politicians, corporations, other people that don't have our best interests at heart has them in their pockets, so we're not going to always get the full story. When I saw the Ukraine-Russia conflict kicking off, and I saw people on CNN newscasts championing war, even though they'll never be in the war, their children will never be in the war, they made so much money they won't have to worry about inflation or anything the average American will have to, like you and me, I could always see, like, they'll be on the point of no return. Return. These are supposed to be the people that's supposed to be against war, for peace, and all this other talk. That's not the case anymore. They say whatever they need to say for the government or corporations, whoever got their hand in their pockets, if you ask me. So I'm curious to see what Joe Logan got to say, and maybe I can add more into it. So let's get into it. Here's what's crazy, man. I've been freaking out over the last like few weeks, like at nighttime, like at nighttime I'll be alone and I just start thinking about the future of the world and I start mm -hmm. like legit freaking out. Like what, what would happen if we were like legit Armageddon, Mad Max, nuclear war? Like how far are we away from that? And it just, it's, it could just give me anxiety before I go to sleep. I'd just be laying there going, fuck, like how does this all resolve? And then this fucking Israel thing pops off and now I'm like legit freaked out. I've been uh, definitely buying a lot of stuff lately for my house, like into the world shit. Like I'm getting Tesla solar right now, that's you know, battery packs so I can live off the grid. And Yeah, that's a good move. Yeah. Yeah, if you can get your house solar, that's a big move. Just fucking a bit of an, you know, at a certain point in time, what is it, what's the electricity even getting you other than keeping the lights on? Though? What, what I'm scared of is like all communications are gone. Like, yeah, collapse the society. How, how hard would it be to shut down our power grid? How hard would it be to blow a few satellites up and no one knows shit? Yeah, that's why like that 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 Starlink, the mm -hmm. you know the satellites thing. I'm thinking about getting that, even though I have I have great internet, but yeah, you know, just because. Oh, what if? It's yeah, it's scary. Yeah, I was in the mountains in Utah and they had Starlink and it was great. It works everywhere. Mm -hmm. It's real, but people keep thinking it's UFOs. Oh, yeah. Like, people keep filming it flying. What is that? Yeah, the dots in the air. Like, I was telling you the other day, I'm sitting at home, like, wondering about the fate of the world. Are we are we literally going to be in a fucking mad Because you don't think anything's going to go bad until it goes bad. Mm -hmm. You know, you remember the day before 9-11? It was mm -hmm. just fucking normal America. Yay, yay. Yeah. And then... There was a whole festival. I think we, we all know this by now. There was a whole festival. I think it was a festival of peace or something. Like, it's so crazy. And those are the first people that was victims or attacked by Hamas. Like, one day, everything's fine and cool, and that's, you know, you're fine for your life. Or you lose your life, unfortunately. It's always important to appreciate each day and try to make the best of it. Because who knows how stuff could turn out. It could be Armageddon. It could be something like an illness or an accident. Either way, you can't tell the future. And the next day, chaos. And then everyone's riding around with an American flag on their car. Yeah. Like, anything can happen. And if anything does happen, like, how how ready, what, how much is the world going to change? I mean, to, like, if you think about any sort of, like, horrific natural disaster that has hit humanity since the beginning of time, whether it's super volcanoes or earthquakes or any of these chaotic things, when those things happen, when when the Mongols roll into your town, when you know when Na Nazi Germany starts taking over Europe, like fuck, exactly. we want to think that that can't happen, but one hundred percent that can happen. And when I when I fucking when I'm alone at night and I'm a little high, <laughs> that's the thing that freaks me out the most. The things that freaks me out the most is international conflicts between superpowers. And how they're willing to kill a certain amount of people, right? So, like, how, what's, a, what's the number where they won't cross that line? Because if you've got groups of people that are willing to shoot missiles into apartment buildings and, 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 and fly jets down and gun people down, and you've seen all those crazy drones. If we're willing to kill a certain amount of people, like, what's the line where they won't cross? What's the line? Is it a million people? Is it a nuclear bomb? 
You know, what, what is the line? There's probably no yeah. line. And what's the guarantee you could put the genie back in the bottle? You set off one nuke. Like, I wouldn't bet on just one nuke going off. There's no retaliation. And if we all know, like, there's no point in retaliating or even firing off the first nuclear missile because it's mutual destruction. Not to mention the structure of the environment, atmosphere, infrastructure, the systems of economics, and everything else we have in place. It's just not worth it. But still, at the end of the day, we still have nuclear weapons. We still have wars. We still have escalations. And we still teeter on the brink closer and closer, it seems, every single day. And it does have me worried. And honestly, I didn't think about it much. Well, I heard about it from, like, you know, people like Alex Jones and other people like I've listened to over the years. But, you know, the southern border, it could be bullshit. But I saw something somewhere online. And then, like I said, it's online. It could be bullshit. And it turns out to be nothing, hopefully. But people were saying, like, the southern border has been used by Hamas, too, or other terrorist groups to, like, infiltrate. And something similar that happened in Israel with their infiltration across the border could happen here. Who knows? Luckily, we, are, we live in a country that is so big and we have guns everywhere. But at the end of the day, people are going to lose their lives. People are going to be suffering because of this stuff. Destruction. Either way, I don't want that stuff to happen. No matter if you win the war or not, you're going to be at a disadvantage for it. Yeah, you might gain some things, but the loss of life, the loss of money, sometimes debt, it's not worth it. That's why I think Sun Tzu within his art of war even like try to emphasize the point of winning your objective without even going to war because going to war hurts a lot of people not to mention the people not going to war they're losing food and money supplying your armies look at what's happening now we're giving billions and billions of dollars to countries like ukraine probably gonna give some stuff to israel too and americans are suffering losing their homes inflation but who's supposed to be supporting us or looking out for us i don't see it and when you think about how much people loved America after 9-11, the whole world was like on America's side. And how much we fucked that up in 23 years or 22 years. Yeah. Fuck that up. Fuck that up. A, mi a million innocent people die because of the Iraq war. I mean, yeah. fuck that, everybody knows that. Too. We need a 9-12 immediately. <laughs> <laughs> we probably are due for one. That's right. what's scary when you see this Israel thing. Like, it scares the shit out of me. Yeah. It scares the shit out of me. Because when I see something like that happen, you know, it's like there's no clear way this resolves peacefully. Like, this is bad. This is real bad. And, and Israel's going to go into Palestine. And they're already bombing and it's all... <sighs> And is there a retaliation for that? And what happens then? And who? What other countries get involved? And exactly. fuck, fuck, man! It just really puts into perspective that there's some shit going on that you're not thinking about because it's not in your life. So if you're a guy like you or I, let's say us, because we're comedians, so we're hanging out at the comedy club, we're doing podcasts. That's our world. Our world is fucking around with people all our, our world is telling jokes our world is hanging out with our friends and doing shows their world is killing people their world is controlling resources and it's not they don't play fair like they they release stories that aren't true they use disinformation to switch narratives they have social media posts that aren't real so they can get people riled up about certain things and then they're also coordinating military attacks. That's their world. We just don't think about that world because we're not in that world. But people have been in that world since the beginning of time. What they've done with us is they've sheltered us in such a way and then censored all the mainstream media in such a way that they completely control the narrative of how you think about what can and cannot happen in the world and why these things are happening and we're seeing that right now we're seeing that like in your face where you're like what and you're also seeing people with massive amounts of conspiracies now right and whenever something like that happens there's always the people that are like how did they not know this was going to happen like isn't this the most sophisticated surveillance systems in the world this from my understanding, and I read like a article or some type of report saying that there was actual like signs of a buildup and this was going to happen. And it was actually, I think, a video of the leader of um, Hamas 
the leader saying that we we're preparing for a major assault within the next few days. I think I saw that. I saw that somewhere. He was talking to some type of reporter. But if you know what I'm talking about, can you link that down below so I can check it out again? But yeah, I think I did see that. So there was like signs of this happening because that was my first thought too. What we know about our intelligence agencies, Israel and United States. The whole idea that this was surprising was more surprising to me than it actually happening in of itself. It's like Israel is the, they're the people that invented Pegasus. That's that shit that gets on your phone where they can listen to anybody and they have like their they have that iron dome that protects them against missiles did you ever see that working mm -mm. they were just showing it the other night yeah. it's show videos of the iron dome working it's crazy so as hamas is launching these missiles they're shooting missiles at the missiles and blowing them up oh, in the sky okay. it's wild Look oh at yeah, this. yeah 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 it's old school missile command remember that video again? yeah <laughs> i mean you have to be 100 percent accurate because any one of these is going to kill a bunch of people but I mean, just imagine living in Israel and you go outside and you're seeing <laughs> missiles getting hit by bombs. Look at this. It's insane. Look at this. They're just jacking them in the sky. But if they miss one, that's a wrap. I mean, how much do how much do each one of these missiles that they're shooting at these other missiles cost? Right. That's yeah. what I was thinking. Million dollars, million dollars, million dollars. And how are they <laughs> getting all the money to shoot those missiles at Israel? Like all of it is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And someone tweeted, see if this is true, that this happened right after uh, Biden, the Biden administration released a bunch of funds to Iran. I think it was like $6 billion. Really? And then yeah. these people in Hamas are thanking Iran for funding this. Wow. But it's you, well, what's real? Yeah. What's real? That sounds what's, like. How much, is, how much of this is real? Yeah. Have you heard what of this? It? Air Force successfully tested secret new stealth missile with mock nuke. Got a stealth nuke stealth base, missile yeah. with a mock nuke. Okay. B-52. America's nuclear weapons are aging, and the Pentagon plans to spend more than $600 billion to keep the potentially world-ending weapons in fighting shape. What a great idea. <laughs> At the, in this article, I saw it said that they were being controlled by floppy disks up until 2019. Well, are you serious? those are accurate. Yeah, that's <laughs> it is top, right. the top of the food chain. They're updating tech. But okay, floppy disks in 2019, but some of the old tech is still solid. The LRSO and Mach Nuke were fired from a B-52, a sturdy and reliable bomber first manufactured in the 50s. The missiles are, in fact, designed to work with this decades-old bomber. Hmm. But a mock, uh, stealth nuke is crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. All of it's crazy. The fact that that's on the table, all of it's crazy. And also the fact that we haven't nuked anybody since 1945. Nobody's nuked anybody. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> it's promising. <laughs> right? It's promising. We got to celebrate 100 years. But it, it's hard to imagine that it's going to last like that forever. It seems like someone's going to get crazy. Yeah, and that's the clear. question. It's like if you're willing to kill, to your question. each missile is 40000 to $50,000, according to a researcher at Israel's Institute for National Security Studies. Wow. Like wow. 20 of them is a million bucks. So, yeah, so the question is, where's, where's this we where are these weapons coming from? And, and then there was also questions of whether or not uh, weapons that we left in Afghanistan were being used. Um, Which is, th that is crazy. Trump was hilarious doing this, this uh, conversation about that, where he was telling them, like, why don't we, you know, get the weapons out of there? Why don't we fill them up with gas and drive them over to Pakistan? And there's like, he said, that, find a video. It was Millie, because he's hilarious. Trump well, literally acts like a comedian. He is. <laughs> first I mean, he's kind of has been, The right? first thing, yes. Oh, okay. The Biden administration, administration informed Congress on Monday that it has taken concrete steps to I'll carry out a prisoner right? exchange with Iran, issuing a waiver that will give Tehran access to $6 billion in Iranian oil revenue that had been blocked by U.S. sanctions, according to a State Department document. It it's crazy. The date that he did this was on September 11th. I remember reading about that too. And people were saying, now that's disrespectful and all this other stuff too. And it is just crazy. Like, you're going to do on the anniversary of 9 11, you're going to release money to a, a country that has been known to help and fund terrorist organizations. If my understanding, they might have, I think they did fund the terrorists that been involved with 9 11, I think. Like, this is, this is Sleepy Joe. This is Creepy Joe. This is Swiss cheese brain Joe. Documents sent to Congress. And that 
was yeah. a month ago. That was a month ago. Yeah. On September 11th. And then, yeah, all these stories the last day, say. <sighs> yeah. So they, they gave him a lot of funds. <laughs> yeah. And then this happens. He needs to do a chargeback. It's just, we are, yeah, call PayPal. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me you got fraud, defrauded. <laughs> We're in the middle of a game that we don't, we, we're not aware of, just like we were talking about before. Like, that's the game they play. The game they're playing is war and money. I mean, just the amount of money that's been spent in Ukraine. And, like, what kind of accounting are you guys doing? Are you guys doing good accounting over there? Like, does everybody know where every fucking dollar went? Or is it just like, let's go crazy? I heard, like, allegations or, you know, I don't know what's the exact words or claims. Yeah, claims that people are using this war in Ukraine for like money laundering. And this is like a good, you know, like hidden way to do so. I wouldn't be surprised by that. People make money from war all the time. And it seems like a very easy way to do so compared to, I don't know, just making weapons, just making vehicles or guns or whatever. Why not put these politicians or these corporations or people that run them, CEOs, whatever you want to call them, or whatever they may be, saying they're actually funding or laundering money back to themselves using taxpayer money. I don't put it past them. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Were you talking about so much money? Like, you could shuffle a little over here and put a little over here. Why don't you look at Jesus? <laughs> and how, how do you just leave weapons, too? I mean, don't they, don't we know where all the, I mean, do, if we have air tags on 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 our book bag, shouldn't they have like little air tags on them? Dude, that whole pullout was an unmitigated disaster. Yeah. Nobody thinks it was good. Exactly. Nobody thinks it was good. Nobody thinks it should have been done that way. I mean, Trump was trying to pull out a long time ago. And they were they were trying to figure out like how many troops you have to leave or maintain the base and 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 get everybody out safe. It is it's tricky because when they know you're pulling out but the fact they left tanks and helicopters and shit like shut the fuck up yeah that's ridiculous it's almost like like you if you want to go, go back full tin foil hat if you want to ensure there's going to be more conflict you leave weapons with the enemy exactly. awesome weapons <laughs> if you want to ensure there's going to be more military action these these guys are pissed you were occupying the country for 20 years. You left behind how many billion dollars worth of tanks and shit? Exactly. And then you want to ensure that you can make even more money? Well, you're going to have to have a superior technology and superior fighting force to go back in there again, which requires more money, more government contracts to fight the old good technology or weapons or whatever else that was left there that the U.S. Army and the other forces were using. It, it makes absolute sense. If you're an evil, manipulating, money-hungry piece of trash, <laughs> it makes absolute sense. And then ISIS or whoever else, I don't think ISIS, I think, I can't remember what the exact organization is, but whoever it was that took these weapons and stuff, they can use these now modern, much better weapons to go and take out other people's territory and get even stronger and threaten them, manipulate them using our technology and our weapon systems. It's fantastic, because that means more war. That means more territory you have to take back. And that means more American soldiers losing their lives for greedy pieces of shit. Disgusting. Of course they're going to use it. And so you tell the military guys, like, yeah, we're, we're pulling out. <laughs> but here's, little, here's the long play. The long play is, there's, you know, we'll be bad. no chance. They're not going to do something with all that stuff. And so we'll probably have to go back in. And then this time we'll really go back in and we'll get control of the lithium. Like, we can't go now. Like, if we go all in now, like, we got to get them to do something really stupid. So then the, we can justify, like, a complete takeover of the country and annihilation of the, the people that are the problem, the people that we left tanks behind. The thing about Afghanistan, though, is, like, it's so, it's so difficult to get through, you know, to... We think of it as like a, a country, but it's mountains. It's like everything is mountains. It's incredible landscape. And there's Greek cities there. There's ancient mm -hmm. Greek cities that were abandoned there during the time of uh, Alexander the Great. 
I had conversations with people talking about Alexander the Great didn't exist. He was made up. All this other bullshit from people that don't know history, but can only try to use history when they don't like a certain group of people or they want to manipulate for their own political agenda. Stuff like this, like artifacts and Greek cities, all the stuff that people don't know unless they really care about history or dive into it, it just undermines the whole argument. Not everything is about, I don't know, some type of agenda, but oftentimes people just don't believe history or don't like history because they think it's, I don't know, made up, fabricated. But if you dive deep into it, there's proof of it. Certain people actually care about history. Other people just want to manipulate it and use it for their own purposes. And no archaeologists are studying them. Like, it's, it's amazing. It's an amazing place. And it also has crazy amounts of resources in terms of, like, I think there's, a, like, an insane amount of lithium there. There's all sorts of shit there that's, like, really valuable. But everybody tries to take over, and they all fail miserably. Hmm. It's, like, one of the ways that they stomped out the Soviet Union was fund funding the Mujahideen, which later became, you know, al-Qaeda or the Taliban. Was it was the Mujahideen, they become the Taliban or al-Qaeda? Either way, they, like they fought, the Russians tried to take over forever and then they gave up. They're like, fuck this. <laughs> it's like too much. You can't win over there. It's like you can't even go anywhere. You can't get through the mountains. You can't just drive. You can't just drive tanks through. Hmm. It's a fucking wild place, an uh, almost unconquerable place. It would be cool to see in the future if that does eventually become somewhere you could go and enjoy the. It you used know. to be. People used to go. There's like videos of people walking around the streets of Kabul. It used to be a place that people would go and vacation. Yeah. Force fields. Come on, force fields. Dude, it's, <laughs> none of that's going to help. It all goes back to force fields. Yes, if we come. This is the last guy Joe Rogan need to have these type of conversations with. He cannot keep up. Oh, he, he can't make it like a go back and forth or entertainer. I'm in, put a big force field there. Mm. I don't think so. <laughs> we leave our force fields behind. Yeah, I feel safer living in Austin, though, now that we're in the middle of a country, just in case of war goes crazy. <laughs> Unless they decide to, like, nuke Dallas. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, good old Joe Wogan ending on the high note. But yeah, I do have the same fears and concerns. Especially now you have two wars not that far away from each other with major allies on both sides who hate each other or got different goals that grew up against each other. Not to mention one or other side from Russia or Ukraine could be funding whatever happened in the Middle East. No guarantee that, but who knows? It, it, it possibly made sense. Either way, this just sound like a good escalation and it could lead to a world war, which I don't want. And we all know how the previous world war started. Small countries, especially the first one, small countries with their issues and that escalated due to their allies. And then you have a first world war with millions and millions of death and suffering leading to a second world war. Either way, it's not worth it. And now we have news and all this, uh, all this other technology. I'm just much more a fan of negotiation, but honestly, I agree with you at the start. At this point, it, I can't imagine an easy way out of this, a clean way out of this. It seems that Benjamin Netanyahu and Israel and the military is going to move into Palestine and clear out Hamas. And that's going to lead to a lot of untold suffering for people that's not involved. And unfortunately, when you have war, especially modern missiles and weapons and stuff like that, it's not like the old days where you just meet on the battlefield and almost all the killing and death is confined there for the most part. Now nah, you're going to be in civilian populations. You're going to be in residential populations where people are still living and trying to survive. And they have to worry about bullets, rockets, and all types of stuff. Not to mention these terrorist organizations love to use the people they claim to protect, govern, and worry about and care about and love. They love to use them as human shields. And then you can have dumbasses talking about Hamas grading all this other bullshit. And how they're victims and how Israel doing all this other stuff. Of course, civilians going to get hit when you have Hamas purposely setting up machine gun nests and headquarters and operations within apartment buildings. Knowing damn well there are children and families in that building that was there first. But they want to use those people as human shields. It's fucked up. But let me know in the comments down below 
It's your boy Logos. Like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Peace.